Hi class! In this video, we will discuss how to determine the height of a remote point. The instruments that we need are the leveling rod, range poles, chalk or marking pins, a 50 meter tape, and the theodolite. So this is the first time we'll be using this instrument. Later in the video, we will talk more about how to use the theodolite. So for example, we want to get the height of this tower, but it's too far away to measure directly. To work around this issue, we can use the principles and equations for triangles in order to compute for the height. So the first thing to do is to set up the theodolite at a convenient location and call it Station A, where one can see clearly the topmost part of the tower. Level the theodolite the same way we did for the precise level in the previous fieldworks. In addition to this, make sure that the vertical reading on the micrometer scale is at zero as well. Later on, I will show you where the micrometer scale is. Next, rotate the telescope of your theodolite vertically until you can see the top of the tower. Once spotted, lock the vertical and horizontal clamps. The horizontal and vertical clamps are located here and here. Turning these clamps will prevent the theodolite from further moving vertically and horizontally. Now, looking through the telescope, you'll see something like this image on the left. So make sure to place the crosshair on the specific point of interest. In our case, that's the top of the tower. You may use the focusing ring on the telescope to zoom in and out until the image is clear. Next, we're gonna look through the eyepiece next to the scope and see something like the image on the right. This could look different depending on the type of theodolite you are using. And this is the micrometer scale that I mentioned earlier. On the scale, you might see letters V and H. V signifies the vertical angle, and H signifies the horizontal angle. Since we are getting the height of a point, the scale for V is what we need. To read this, you will see two parallel lines on the scale. If the division is not bisecting the parallel lines, use the micrometer knob to move the scale little by little until it reaches the correct position. Once it does, you may now read the scale. So this part shows the angle in degrees, and this one shows minutes and seconds of the angle. Each of these longer lines signify 5 minutes, and it is sectioned further into 1 minute divisions. So this is 50 minutes, 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55 minutes. Each minute is then divided into 20 second sections. So this is 50 minutes and 20 seconds, 50 minutes and 40 seconds, and then your 51 minutes. Taking all of that into account, we can determine that the reading on this scale is 33 degrees and 53 seconds. We will label that angle that we just took as angle alpha and relay that info to your recorder to keep track of all the readings we need for our computation. Afterwards, release the vertical clamp, then rotate your telescope back to horizontal level. This means that the vertical reading should be zero. Once the reading is at zero, lock the vertical clamp again. Next, have the rod man stand in the line of sight of the theodolite and near the tower. Using the theodolite scope, get the reading on the leveling staff. This reading is the height of the instrument for the first trial. In our case, that value is 1.49 meters. Next, move the theodolite towards the tower and call it Station B. After leveling the theodolite, release the vertical clamp and rotate the telescope towards the top of the tower once more. Get the vertical angle reading on the micrometer scale and have the recorder write it down again. This time, we will label that angle as angle beta. Next. Release the vertical clamp and rotate it back to the horizontal level to get the new height of the instrument. Have the rod man stay in his original position in order to get the leveling staff reading. In our case, the reading was 1.20 meters. 
Next, have the tape man measure the distance between A and B. In our case, that was 7.70 meters. If the distance between A and B is too large, you may use breaking the tape method with the use of range poles. Finally, combine all of the data gathered in order to determine the height of the remote point. So the figure drawn shows the data gathered and their relationship to each other. This is the tower, this is the leveling rod, and these are the positions of your theodolite. Point A represents the position of theodolite at station A. Angle alpha is from the horizontal to the top of the tower, and based on the measured height of the instrument taken earlier, height of point A is 1.49 meters. Next, point B represents the position of the theodolite at station B. From here, we measured angle beta, which is from the horizontal to the top of the tower as well. The height of the instrument taken at this point is the height of point B, which is 1.20 meters. Looking at our figure, we can see that we have a triangle ACD. Let's first get the location of C, which is X distances away horizontally from B. In order to get X, let's look at this other smaller triangle. From this, we can use the tangent function to solve for X. Tangent beta equals opposite over adjacent, where the opposite side is this line, and that line is just the difference between 1.49 and 1.20. Adjacent is the horizontal distance x, and beta is 37 degrees. So solving for x, we get 0 0.38 meters. Next, from this, we can get the distance from A to C. And that is just the distance A to B, which is 7.70, plus distance x. Doing this, we get 8.08 meters. Now, we have one of the sides for triangle ACD, which is side AC. Next, we can solve for the other side, CD, using sine law. So, CD over the sine of the opposite angle, which is angle alpha, equals AC over the opposite angle, which is labeled as theta. Looking at the figure, we can see its relationship with beta and alpha. Due to the theorem for alternating interior angles, if this is beta, then this is also beta. And if this is alpha, this is also alpha. And if we subtract alpha from beta, we get theta. So knowing this, we can solve for CD, which is 82.90 meters. Now we have the length of side CD, which also happens to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Therefore, using the sine function, I can get the length of the opposite side. And the opposite side is just the height of the tower minus 1.49. So sine beta equals h for the height of the tower minus 1.49 over the hypotenuse, which is again your side CD. Using this equation, we can solve for h, which is 51.38 meters. So now, we have successfully determined the height of the remote point. Next, present these values and computations in your preliminary data sheet, and that wraps up this fieldwork. For your class, just use the class values I have uploaded in Blackboard, and use that to fill in the table of your preliminary data sheet, and compute for the height of the remote point. Include the sample computation and sketch. The sketch can look like this figure shown. Or you may also just sketch the actual fieldwork. So that's it for this fieldwork. See you in the next video.